Good evening. Welcome to Sutishai Live English. My guest tonight, Kunte Bunna, former Thai foreign minister. And of course, he spent almost all of his life in foreign office, in the foreign service. And of course, everything that happens in the world attracts his attention. And I'm going to talk to him today about Thai diplomacy and this chaotic world of today. Good evening, good day. Good evening, Kun Chai. Yes, last week, Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk said that the times of peace are over. The post-war era is over. We live in new times in the pre-war era. For some of our brothers, this is no longer even the pre-war era, but the period of full-scale war in its most cruel version. Donald Tusk, Polish Prime Minister. Do you agree with him? Good day. Not entirely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, oh. A number of wars around the world at the moment, but uh, what he meant, I think, was that we used to think we were post-war and, you know, we are comfortable that we are in peace, but now we probably are in a pre-war period, meaning that we see an imminent big war. He's not talking about a third world war, but a real war just right in front of us. Well, he has a, a real war not so far uh, from his border uh, mm. between uh, Ukraine uh, and Russia. Mm. And, uh, we are in a post-Cold uh, War mm. uh, situation. And uh, the Cold War used to be uh, mm. cold in that part of the world. Yeah. It wasn't in the rest of the world, mm. not in our part of the world. Mm. Uh, now and now he has a hot war uh, not so far from his border That's so right. uh, he he's right to be he's right to be worried mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well he's the right to be very concerned mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, from our position in thailand you see the threat of war more or less more frightening than say a few years ago no, uh, I think um, we from Thailand, from Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we are still far from the uh, battle scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, Ukraine-Russian uh, war. Mm -hmm. In other parts of the world, in the middle, the, the, the Middle East, there's a there are several hot wars going on. Mm -hmm. But in uh, East Asia, the situation I think is still. Uh, relatively safe. Mm -hmm. But are we really safe? Because I don't think there's any safe place now that the world is right in the middle of a few hot wars. We, we're not, we, we're, of course, we're not really safe because mm -hmm. uh, this ongoing uh, dispute in the South China Sea, uh, notably at the moment between uh, China and the Philippines, but mm -hmm. really and other countries in Southeast Asia too. Mm -hmm. But I think um, that's relative compared with the Middle East or mm -hmm. uh, in Ukraine, of course, um, it, it's still manageable. Mm -hmm. But the war next door to our West, Myanmar, how do you consider that? What kind of a threat does that pose to us? That is a civil war and mm -hmm. it, it does pose uh, an immediate threat uh, to Thailand, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thai diplomacy again will be under challenge, will be going through some test. How do you see Thai diplomacy in this modern times under this, what I call a very chaotic world? Is Thai diplomacy being challenged and do you think Thai diplomacy can cope with the situation now? Thai diplomacy at this point in time has the choice between uh, being active and passive. Mm. Now, uh, by being active, um, 
we shouldn't be active all the time mm -hmm. and passive uh, we shouldn't be passive all the time we have to choose the timing uh, very well uh, mm -hmm. to survive in this what you call chaotic world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, before going back to to our uh, to our west I, I think uh, for for Thai diplomacy at the moment, the positive thing is uh, to the east. Mm -hmm. I think the the present government uh, has done very well in mm -hmm. in in our relations with Cambodia, mm -hmm. uh, Cambodia first country that uh, the new prime minister visited, and mm -hmm. that the visit has been reciprocated, mm -hmm. and I. Uh, the, the, the positive signs in the uh, sort of um, to demarcate the sea border, mm. uh, unlock uh, the possibility of um, uh, the overlapping area where, where there is natural gas. Mm. Uh, I think um, Thai diplomacy should work hard. Um, mm. on. And uh, the, there's a sort of... Um, as a byproduct, uh, you will have seen that uh, there's a possibility that the border uh, at uh, Prawihan mm -hmm. can be reopened after it has been closed for 16 years. Yeah. I think diplomacy should be also working on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, th I think our relationship with uh, Cambodia uh, is going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and uh, the government uh, should pursue this actively. On the other hand, our issue with Myanmar is more complicated. And what do you think it should our role be? Uh, well, towards the um, situation in, in Myanmar is that, first of all, we should work hard always with ASEAN mm -hmm. and support the present chair, and that is Laos. Uh, in, in its um, communications with the um, uh, powers that be in Myanmar, in Nepido. Mm -hmm. This doesn't mean to say that uh, we shouldn't be more active. Mm -hmm. uh, we ourselves uh, should, well, uh, if it were me, uh, mm -hmm. I would try to uh, arrange for talks uh, mm -hmm. between uh, the parties in Myanmar, in Thailand itself. In Thailand itself, yes, mm. yes. Mm. If Bangkok um, is not convenient, we could have a meeting in in Chiang Mai and uh, invite uh, the, uh, the the parties involved uh, to mm. to talks there. Chiang Mai or Chiang Mai or Phuket, oh, anywhere, <laughs> anywhere. Right. That reminds me of Bang San, where once we used to use Bang San as the place where we invited our friends from what Indonesia, Malaysia. To That's be, right. I, uh, as a result of the meeting uh, in Bangsan in 1967, ASEAN was born. Right, right. But the difficulty is in getting all the stakeholders to agree to this kind of meeting. Yes, um, as you saw the other day, mm -hmm. uh, the um, uh, a committee in our National Assembly uh, mm -hmm. to do something and uh, they've gathered um, quite a number of stakeholders yes. uh, except the the, the 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 major ones the powers that be in myanmar and mm. i i think uh, the thai government uh, should be uh, working in that direction to get all the parties together and mm. see mm -hmm. kind of uh, compromise mm. uh, solution to the problems that they're facing today mm -hmm. Well, the Myanmar Foreign Ministry sent a note to the Thai Foreign Ministry on that particular issue, expressing their dissatisfaction with the fact that this House Committee organized this seminar. Mm -hmm. So why would the Myanmar Foreign Ministry object to the Thai Parliamentary Committee uh, hosting a meeting for all parties concerned? Well, uh, th th that's a kind of a knee-jerk reaction uh, from 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 from, um, from Nepidor. Yeah. Uh, 
but 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 then our national assembly is a sovereign body uh, right. invite whoever uh, to a meeting yes 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 mm -hmm. but, to, to discuss a very important uh, question sure sure the tide in Myanmar civil war now seems to have turned uh, somehow with reports that we get from Myanmar that the so-called the other side is now winning in some of the battles against the army. Are you sure of that? Hmm? Or, or, or is it wishful thinking? <laughs> I don't know. These are the reports we get, yes. Can you verify it? Mm -hmm. No, uh, not every story, no. Okay. Uh, I, uh, since uh, I've not been back in, in, in Myanmar for, for about um, three or four years, Yes. So, so I have no feel for it. Uh, I wish I could have a, a an opportunity uh, mm -hmm. visit. Mm -hmm. It's only by by visiting that mm -hmm. that that you get a feel feel for it. But mm -hmm. all this all this report about um, mm -hmm. uh, about the, the the situation in the field, you cannot verify it. No, no, not all the stories can be verified, but the. It seems that several reports, you know, from even from the Myanmar's official uh, publications are suggesting that uh, there's some troubles in some of the areas out in the Chan state and even near the Thai border, Mesot on the on this side, the Karen area, mm -hmm. some of the outposts, the government outposts have been taken over. Well, we don't yeah. know how accurate these reports are. We don't know. And, you know, the uh, Western press, mm -hmm. we, we get so much news from the mm. Western, but mm. but we really don't know the situation on the mm. ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we also get reports that China has been trying to facilitate talks between the government side and the uh, armed rebels or whatever you call them uh, in southern Th china because china is worried about their own economic interests in southern china on the myanmar border you think china and thailand could jointly play a positive role in trying to work out a peace process for myanmar i i, I think so mm -hmm. uh, I you will have to ask the uh, people in the in the foreign ministry about this. Uh, <laughs> no, are we are we in communication with 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 the Chinese uh, mm -hmm. to uh, find a solution uh, mm -hmm. to the uh, problems in Myanmar? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, in the bigger picture, ASEAN, South China Sea tension in North Korea, Taiwan. Uh, do you see any signs of more trouble uh, arising in the in next few months or this year or next year? Well, you, you, you're putting it in terms of next few months, you know, sort of a short term, middle term, long term. Mm -hmm. I think in a situation sort of back to the future, where <laughs> in a way this part of the world, uh, mm -hmm. we're to the 1950s, don't you think? Yeah, you know, yeah, right. Back to the 1950s, mm -hmm. um, the Western countries are, are trying to to contain uh, mm -hmm. China again, uh, see China as uh, as a threat, mm -hmm. and recall that um, this led in mm -hmm. 1954 mm -hmm. uh, the um, meeting in Manila. Mm -hmm. Out with the Treaty of Manila in 1954, mm -hmm. and this through the foundation of the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization in Bangkok. Yes, I think people are of goodwill mm -hmm. in the middle of the 1950s. Mm -hmm. they, saw, they 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 saw the dangers mm -hmm. that, that that were coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, the dangers, of course, uh, became became what was known as the, as the Vietnam War. Right. So people of, of, of goodwill 
mm -hmm. uh, in the middle of the 1950s, formed uh, the non-aligned movement there right. in Bandung in 1955. Yes. And although Thailand had been active in the Manila Treaty, mm -hmm. Bangkok became the headquarters of the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization, or CETO. CETO, right. So we were also active in the meeting in Bandung. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, the rapporteur of mm -hmm. the meeting in Bandung was the Thai Foreign Minister, uh, our, our great Foreign Minister, uh, Prince Wan. Prince Wan. Mm -hmm. He, he actually draft, drafted the Bandung Declaration, which led later on to the, fall, to the establishment of the non-aligned movement, which, oh. which Thailand not joined. Mm -hmm. So uh, until very much later, uh, at the time of um, Foreign Minister uh, Surin Pitsuwan. Yes. I think when, when I use the word you know, active and passive, proactive, mm -hmm. and so on, I mm -hmm. think what, one of the things that um, that uh, Thailand, uh, now that we are a member of the non-aligned movement, mm -hmm. what we're doing is that um, to to propose to mm -hmm. the non-aligned movement via mm -hmm. that non that non-aligned movement uh, should step in uh, and um, and be and be active uh, mm -hmm. in, in trying to find solutions to mm -hmm. all the problems of the world the Ukraine-Russian war, the mm. situation in the Middle East, mm -hmm. uh, the situation in the South China Sea, and mm. the situation in the Taiwan Strait, all the way up to the situation on the uh, Korean Peninsula. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think anyone has activated the non-aligned movement at all. No. And I wish, I wish someone would. Mm -hmm. Why? I think the you know in the non-aligned movement, mm -hmm. um, India mm -hmm. under Jawaharlal Nehru was mm -hmm. very active, mm -hmm. and I, I don't think India is doing enough uh, to 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 help uh, solve the problems of the world. And she mm -hmm. could do this on her herself on her own because mm -hmm. she is you know among the, the top level of the. Um, uh, powers mm -hmm. middle if you like mm -hmm. um she 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 uh, and india could take the non-aligned uh, movement along with her mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do you think the non-aligned movement is still relevant in this world or perhaps you're suggesting that it is the only or uh, the alternative to the current stalemate well, it seems to be that the non-aligned movement is not active. It seems to be that the non-aligned movement is moribund. My point is that it should be reactivated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you Re think China, China and the United States will react positively to the revival of the non-aligned movement? I'm sure China would act uh, would would react positively. Uh, China mm -hmm. is a, is an observer of the non-aligned movement. Uh, Joe and Lai was there, right, in Bandung. Oh, of course, the USA would not look at such a move in a positive light. No, no. But if Washington does not react positively, then you can not really get the peace process moving. Right, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, I think the, the whole world, mm -hmm. world is waiting for is the presidential election in the USA. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh -huh. We just don't know what, what, what's going to happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whatever happens in the US, uh, mm -hmm. the rest of the world, mm -hmm. or, or pe people of goodwill in the rest of the world, yes. uh, should, should, should be doing their best, trying their best mm -hmm. uh, to, 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 to solve uh, the, the, mm -hmm. the situation that you mentioned yes uh, for, for the sake of mm -hmm. for the for the sake of world peace yes yes mm -hmm. in your personal opinion is the possible return of donald trump to the white house good news or bad news for the I, world? I, I i wouldn't like to put it that way mm -hmm. I, think, I think donald trump um 
Do- Donald Trump can can be can be both positive and negative. Uh-huh. You recall that Donald Trump met with the leader of mm-hmm. Korea. Yes, yes, Kim Jong Un. Yes, <laughs> and if he had been supported, and mm-hmm. if he had, uh, kept it going, if if he had pursued it, mm-hmm. it could have led somewhere. Because mm-hmm. don't forget that the Korean War mm-hmm. has ended. There's mm-hmm. never proper peace in, in to the Korean War. No, and I think that's another um, another issue that can mm-hmm. be the 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 end of the Korean War. Mm-hmm. 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 So you mean if Donald Trump had stayed for another term, he might have achieved peace with North Korea, and thereby, you know. Expanding the peace process to other parts of the world. He could have. He could have. You know, um, I, 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 I uh, looking at looking at it uh, positively. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If Donald Trump had kept on with mm-hmm. his um, North Korean initiative mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the Korean Peninsula, mm-hmm. uh, removed one hot spot yeah. from from your chaotic world mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but he would have had to he he would have had to and he would have to mm-hmm. uh, with him mm-hmm. uh, his national security council and so on yes yes which is not a very easy process in america it's quite complicated too mm-hmm. and, and, and the government and the congress as well of course Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, Nixon, mm-hmm. Nixon did it. Yeah, they they, did. They, they, norm, they 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 more or less normalized relations with the with with China, and yes. this to the Vietnam War. Mm-hmm. So, so 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 you know things can be done if you if you just uh, keep mm-hmm. working on it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Don't forget that the Western withdrawal. Mm-hmm. from Afghanistan mm-hmm. really initiated started mm-hmm. by not Donald Trump and and then uh, Biden 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 completed it yes but yes mm-hmm. Donald started it mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you can never you can never know with, with Donald Trump he's, <laughs> un- he's <laughs> unpredictable he's and, unpredictable and, right. uh, and he could prove uh, to be very very positive for yeah. Of for world peace, yes, especially if he was trying to get the Nobel Prize Peace Prize, right? <laughs> and the second term is the last term for any American president too. So this is his last chance to be recognized as a peacemaker of the world. Yes, no, no I, I, there has been an interval. I think I think he starts again, doesn't he? If he were to win, he starts. Yeah, he can have two terms. Two terms? Ah, what? You know how old he is? He's right. like seventy-seven. <laughs> but then, of course, Joe Biden is also eighty-one this year. Hmm? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we are all in our eighties, <laughs> right? <laughs> we belong to the same generation as Biden. And Donald Trump, but if you know, Donald Trump comes back, you think his relations with Xi Jinping of China will be better than the last term? Would there be another trade war? Would there be more sanctions? Would there be more restrictions on trade between China and the United States? You never know. You never know. As I said. Uh... I said Donald Trump is unpredictable. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. But Trump announces he has announced that if he becomes president again, he will end the Ukraine war in twenty-four hours. <laughs> right, right. Uh-huh. We'll, we'll mm-hmm. see. We'll see, huh? But then for Thailand and ASEAN, as beginning to have concern about Donald Trump's coming back to the White House because. Is not really interested in Asia that much. Are you concerned about that too? No, no, no. I think, no, I think um, 
as I started, you know, sort of um, you know, our diplomacy it can be either active or passive, proactive right. or, or uh, low profile. So yes. if, if the Americans are mm -hmm. not going to be so um, interested in, 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 in Asia, I, I think that for me anyway, that's fine with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so our Thai diplomacy can be active, can be passive or proactive, but not too passive. You said we should be active all the time, but we should not be passive all the time, right? You, you, you shouldn't be active all the time, because if you're active all the time, it, it's called a hyperactive. Hyperactive, and, yes. <laughs> can be a, a kind of illness as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you don't want to be active all the time. Right. And not passive all the time either. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, have I, to know, uh, you know when to move and when to keep quiet. That is the challenge. You have to know when to be active, when to be passive. And that is the biggest test, I think, for Thai diplomacy at the moment. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. And I have this book with me, you know, Thai diplomacy with that conversation with that Bunak. And one of the first questions you were asked in this book was, some academics have characterized Thai diplomacy as bamboo diplomacy due to its flexibility. The question is, do you think this is an accurate characterization or is Thai diplomacy more like a balancing act? I know your, 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 your long response to this. What do you say today about bamboo diplomacy and balancing act? Does that still apply to the Thai diplomacy now? As, as I said in, in my conversation mm -hmm. with Ambassador Nusun mm -hmm. um, this I've never believed in this idea of a bamboo diplomacy and no. bend, bending with the wind. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, think, I think the success of Thai diplomacy mm -hmm. is that we don't uh bend with the wind mm. but which we we watch we watch we wait mm -hmm. and see uh, where 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 the wind is blowing mm -hmm. uh, and then and then we take actions uh, mm -hmm. so that we would not be blown down or wow. blown away mm -hmm. so i uh, used not not bending uh with the wind but to bend before the wind comes yeah, that, that's that's a, a nice way of putting it, to bend before the wind comes. But you have to know the direction of the wind. You have to be able to sense or detect the direction of the wind. Yes, yeah, you have to have good, good, good instinct. Ah, ah, yes. And uh, I think collectively, collectively, mm -hmm. I think, uh, I, I think the, the Thai government has always had a good uh, collective a feeling of mm. um, of where and how the wind is going to blow. Mm. But it's more difficult now with the superpowers, China and the United States, trying to have greater influence in this part of the world, including Thailand and ASEAN. Is it more difficult now for Thai diplomacy to operate under the new environment? No, I don't think so. I think our role in the um, um, in the relationship between uh, China and the USA is to be a bridge and um, and to help calm things down. A bridge, uh, a bridge, a, a bridge. Mm. Uh, if we're and if if we can't do it alone, mm. uh, then uh, uh, keep on board uh, mm. our and friends so mm. that. Our ten countries uh, should be working in the same direction, and then and ASEAN, ASEAN should be should be the bridge between mm. China and the USA. Mm. Do they accept us being a bridge? They have to accept our role. I, I think we still have a role, and I think they still ac accept this role um, mm -hmm. because all of them. Uh, all these um, outside uh, mm. power accept the so-called centrality of mm. us, you know, mm. and 
why that's why uh, at every ASEAN ministerial meeting, mm. you know, all other uh, powers come and ASEAN uh, mm. occupy uh, the central uh, part in mm. providing the agenda for the mm. conversation. Mm -hmm. Can Thailand be an honest peace broker, say, in the Myanmar crisis? Yes, I think so. As I said, um, we should support Laos, the present chairman of uh, of ASEAN, and that. Uh, but at the same time, um, uh, this doesn't mean to say that we 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 cannot uh, uh, have our own our own initiatives. Uh, as as I said, um, I would try to to get a a, a meeting uh, of all the stakeholders in in Myanmar and and Thailand uh, can can host uh, can pro mm -hmm. can propose and host such a meeting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. With our good offices, and of course, they all know that Thailand will be friendly. We will be, we will welcome them, and we would serve them good Thai food and even wine if they want to, as long as they can reach agreement, right? <laughs> That's what we did in between 1965 and 1967. That's how we brought um, Indonesia, Malaysia together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, some academics have suggested that we managed to help with the Cambodian crisis, the the three parties in conflict at that time. So there's no reason why we cannot do it with Myanmar. Also, three parties, they said the uh, SAC, the, the military, mm, the, yeah. ethnic, the ethnic armed uh, organizations, and then the NUG, you know, the natural unity government. Uh, if there were three parties there, we could you know, more or less manage it the same way that we help Cambodia. Yes, uh, absolutely. But don't forget that mm. before we went to the Paris International Conference on Cambodia in 1991, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, 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 it took a good 10 years. Oh, yeah. A great I... deal of patience. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not only were not not only did we have to uh, support the uh, Cambodian parties uh, to talk to each other, but we also ha we also had to 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 convince uh, the, the the great powers uh, involved. Yeah. I know it very well because because uh, in, in this process, uh, I was involved in this process uh, oh. in, in in Beijing when I was ambassador uh, there uh, from from nineteen eighty six to nineteen ninety. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We we had to um, get the uh, get Chinese uh, support uh, for 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 our ideas as well. Uh -huh. why did the Chinese accept our role, and why did the United States and the Western powers accept our role at the time? I think the um, uh, the United States and Western countries uh, were very willing uh, for us to, uh, to 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 play an active role in this. Uh, uh, China, uh, China was was more reluctant. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, he, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, um, the, the the Chinese uh, told us that um, mm -hmm. ultimately it's 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 up to Thailand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So we played the card right. Yes. At that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the world has changed so much. The role of diplomats has also been, you know, affected one way or the other. What do you think modern day diplomats should do? How do they, how should they adjust their role? How does technology affect diplomacy? I mean, during your time, it was totally different. You, you were part of the analog world. That's right. Diplomacy was through what correspondence was through face-to-face -face meetings. Nowadays, diplomacy is conducted in a totally different way. You see, that's good improvement or things getting worse. No, I think um, we were talking about Thai diplomats. Yes, and um, I think Thai diplomats uh, move uh, with the time. I can see this; they move with the time. Mm -hmm. That that was almost daily meetings by Zoom, uh, between uh, our embassies abroad and ministries at home uh, th things are very fast so um and and, and dip, thai diplomats mm -hmm. 
are, are, are now much better um, are now much better trained uh, wow. the, the diplomats uh, of my time who are mm. now all retired mm. <laughs> 20 years ago and yeah. compare the diplomats nowadays you know, we are we are we 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 of course as you said we 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 are we belong to the analog uh, generation but um, the, the 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 diplomats now they have, they're very 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 fast and they're yeah. computer literate uh, they move very fast and, mm. and the things they 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 they, they report uh, back to bangkok is very relevant yes and, yes mm-hmm. and of a very high quality Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But some basic qualities must remain, right? Despite right. changes in technology, what are they? What are some of the basic quali- qualities, qualifications, principles that you know every diplomat, even today, has to adhere to? Uh, ultimately, a good diplomat it, it must be persuasive. Yes, persuasive, right. Yeah. And to be persuasive uh, mm. is ultimately analog. It's still <laughs> face. You still have to go and explain uh, the situation and the problems uh, of uh, Thailand uh, yeah. to, to to whoever, to, to, to the Europeans. Yes, you, yes. So personally, mm. you just have to go uh, to, to the ministries, to the parliaments, yes. you, you just have to do the legwork and the work and the and the persuasion. Yes, yes. Oh, but if, oh, if you can do it on your own, then then you, then you must have uh, friends and allies, and, yeah. and uh, we do have uh, friends in, in us that we work together yes. uh, with, uh, very closely. And apart from us, we 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 also work uh, closely with the um, you know to- i know well, what you would call it um, you know some big countries like brazil india yeah. yes. so on. we yes. we work closely with well with them and and worked well as well and ultimately it's all personal and, and analog as you say yes right but even in retirement kunte you're still following this you know, all the world events very closely it's everything is still quite uh exciting for you is you still keep abreast of all the news every day every hour of the day all the news or the breaking news of course and i follow <laughs> yeah yeah because i think our generation uh, is very much i don't know you cannot give up that you know the curiosity of uh, knowing what is happening around the world that's right. That's right. Once you're bitten, you 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 always you, you always follow. You you always follow the news. <laughs> right, right. Can't help it. <laughs> Can't help it. Can't help it. Are you about what, mad about news or something? Uh, uh, news junk. News junkie. <laughs> I call it. Yes. <laughs> title about your books. Uh, yeah. But then, you know, it keeps us alert, it keeps us hopeful, at least, or sometimes we feel a little bit uh, frustrated or quite um, concerned about what's happening. But then in the end, you know, it's human nature. You just cannot uh, stop thinking, worrying, following up, analyzing, and then exchanging views with people like you and me, right? <laughs> right. That's right. We'll continue this conversation uh, for the rest of our life, I hope. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, sure. Okay, I'll, I hope I can invite you back again to this program. But for today, thank you very much, Kuntet. Always You're... very nice, very excited to talk to you on, on any issue, in fact. But today, world affairs. Thank you so much, Kuntet. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Good night. Bye-bye.